Design Cast Podcast, the podcast for design and STEAM educators. Hello and welcome to Design Cast, a podcast where I interview a wide range of excellent guests in design and STEAM education to get their unique perspectives. My name is Jason Reagan and I use my 20 plus years of experience as a design educator to dig deep into complex issues. This podcast has one simple mission, to create a community of people around the world that are interested in design and STEAM education. Each episode, I chat with guests from all corners of the design world, from classroom teachers to authors and even to educational consultants. We discuss a wide range of topics that we feel are relevant today. I do want to ask you that if you're enjoying this podcast, please leave a review, rate, subscribe, share, or download from your favorite podcasting app. This helps the podcast get discovered by listeners that might not find it otherwise. Also, it helps me to continually define the direction of future guests and episodes. Feel free to drop by my website, www.jasonreagan.ga, to leave me a comment or to sign up to be considered as a future guest on future episodes. Also, don't forget to stop by Anchor and leave me a voice clip that could even end up in an upcoming show. Thanks for listening. So let's get to it. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at www.teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com. Now let's get on to the episode. All right, welcome back to another episode of Design Cast. And, you know, I cannot believe it. We've surpassed the 90 episode mark. So I want to thank everybody for your continued support of the podcast. It is wonderful to see. And each with each episode, more and more listeners in new countries are emerging. And I am just incredibly humble that or humbled <laughs> that people would continue to be interested in what I have to say. And so thank you so much. I have had some really great response from recent episodes, especially the one on well-being recently with Anna McMahon. And then I've had some other feedback from other episodes previous to that. So thank you guys, everybody, for listening. It is wonderful to know that you're still interested in the things that I myself am finding interest in. So thank you so much for that. I uh, Today I'm just interested to hear about your thoughts on esports and on gamification of learning. And, you know, I've ha- been thinking about this a lot lately because as schools come back in person, um, you know, after – a pretty long absence from in-person classes in, in many cases, I'm I'm sure that, you know, teachers are stretched. You know, we were talking about wellness last time, and I know that teachers are worn out. But at the same time, kids are thirsty for competition, thirsty for interaction, and really would love to, you know, to do some new things. And so I believe the rise of esports especially in schools, is an indication of that thirst. And so I'm really interested to hear what's going on at your own institution regarding this. And so, you know, when you think about esports, you know, it's more than just, you know, grabbing a controller and playing a video game. It's a lot more than that. We're we're talking about collaborative world building. We're talking about um, e, uh, AR and, and VR and all kinds of different things. And so I was thinking about what kinds of skills students learn through or practice through esports. And, you know, anytime students can work on collaboration skills, I think it really does help with real world skills in the future. And so I, I do believe that esports, especially the ones I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, 
um, really do help with those collaboration skills, those collaboration, those situational awareness that students have um, or don't have, especially lately as they've come right back from being in a really long period of not being with their classmates or with their peers. Also, you know, the, the level of engagement that they have with each other beyond just the collaboration, but also to think about how they're engaged with each other, learning to get along, learning to um, understand people's differences, understand each other's backgrounds. I think it's really important in your esports set of settings. You know, you you can see how even that, especially since esports not bound by by borders, but you can actually you know compete with students from around the world. And so I think allowing that engagement with one another, that peer engagement, but also the engagement with adults, is a really great way for esports and gamification to to really take hold and so also you know the uh, stem pathways the, the career pathways that come from stem education um, these esports just reinforce that and when i say esports obviously i'm talking about the spirit of competition but not always competition as in you know i'm going to be the winner necessarily but the competition of pushing each other to be better and so these STEM pathways that can come out of gamification of learning and using esports platforms to teach all these different skills of perseverance and grit and um, resilience, they come from that. Also, I've seen it with my own children, the, the improved brain function <laughs> that comes from building worlds and working together, but also in the comp the healthy competition that comes from that, um, I think is a, it's a lifelong benefit. And then, you know, having connections from around the world, which I mentioned earlier, is another great way to encourage the esports program in your school or in your community is thinking about how they're going to meet people that are their their age or close to their age from around the world and i think it's great to have that open-mindedness uh, especially more now than ever the understanding the empathy skills that come from that and you know in a lot of universities especially in north america at the moment and in europe and, and in the uk there are scholarship opportunities actually for esports um, students and so i really see a lot of benefits from working with students in that sort of setting obviously you've got robotics and you've got other um, competition based activities that take place but what i'm really talking about here is more of the virtual electronic sports sort of mindset and so there's all kinds of platforms we can we can talk about i think probably one of the most used which can be geared all the way down into primary school is that idea of minecraft and how that platform has been developed i, I like the idea that you're able as an educator to to sort of have your own server to have students join that server and then have competitions within that or have tasks within that and so i really would love to hear from some listeners about if and how they're using minecraft in order to build these skills these collaboration skills these engagement skills that kind of thing i also i think roblox um, is another one my kids um, love to dabble in roblox i'm interested to see if anyone's been able to harness that as a viable gamification of learning activity because of the the less structured less controlled environment that roblox offers i'm interested to hear if anyone's using that so if you're using that please reach out to me through my social media platforms and, and, and profiles or you can leave me a voice note at SpeakPipe or directly into the episode through Anchor. I would really love to hear how you are using Roblox. Scratch and Scratch Junior have been around for a long time now and I'm really interested to hear if 
you are having success still with using Scratch. It's interesting to think about something where students can replicate what has been successful in the past. And then even if you've been able to develop any kind of comp- competitive competition around Scratch or Scratch Junior. So if any of you have done that, please let me know. I would love to hear more about that. You know, there's also online gaming and world building through other kinds of situations. I'd love to hear if you've been able to use your classroom or your after school activities to do or in your community even how you've been able to use maybe gaming consoles and platforms in order to create esports leagues. I'm really, really interested. And also, there may be some things out there that I have not mentioned. I would be very, very intrigued to hear about that from from you all. And so, in my own experience, I have used Minecraft, created my own server, students come to it, and then I give them a plot or a piece of land and then there's a task for them to complete. And you let them know ahead of time the kind of task. You can give them a rubric or a scoring matrix to show what you're expecting. You give them a time limit and you have control of that world. And I've had some very, very good success with students doing that. And I consider that to be esports, you know? And I, w- I would love to hear more about that if you've been able to do that. I am saying all this because next episode, I am so excited to announce that I have been in contact with Stempunks. And Stempunks are based in the um, in Australia, and they are working currently with working on doing some esports activities. And so next episode next week will be our discussion and i can't wait to share that with you Uh, i learned so much by listening to these guys i'm really really excited about what uh, they have to offer about the programs they're developing about how they're harnessing these esports competition mindsets and working to develop a global network of competitive teams and clubs um, that can compete either locally and in person or remotely around the world virtually. So it's really exciting to talk to them, and I can't wait for you to check out that episode next week. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I really want to hear from you. Please reach out. Check out this uh, podcast episode. Let me know what your thoughts are. What are you using? What are you doing? I'm really, really really keen to find out more because I would love to see where this can go. And I would love to see possibly us developing our own connections and our own partnerships uh, as the schools uh, continue to go back in person. Um, Unfortunately, at the moment, you know, there's some schools going back online uh, in this part of the world. And so it's a good time for us to have this discussion because I think it could turn into something there too. So, Thank you guys so much. If you're enjoying the podcast, please rate or uh, leave a review on Apple Podcast. I would really, really appreciate it. I can't. I don't have the words of thanks to thank everyone who have done that, and it just takes a few minutes. So please, please leave me a rating or review, and I would love to hear from you. But in the meantime, you guys take care of yourself and be good to each other. Hi guys, this is Jason from DesignCast, and I'm here talking to you about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, let me give you a rundown. Basically, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. So here's how it works. Anchor lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to the most popular uh, listening platforms, including Spotify, with a single tap. Anchor is also the only place you can publish video podcasts to Spotify. With Anchor's 
Creators can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. Best of all, Anchor is totally free. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I hope you enjoyed that episode of DesignCast. I'm Jason, your host, and I produced and created this podcast. If you have any input, I would love to hear from you, and I look forward to seeing you again really soon.